PC using XPatter, and I believe XPatter officially is owned by Pinnacle Game Profiler, which is a slightly different program. I prefer XPatter. I'm more than sure if you do a few Google searches, you'll be able to find a good download of XPatter. In fact, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, let, let's start. And this is just to use your controller with your uh, with your PC. It could be a great remote control, you know, whatever. The reason why I clicked the video. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click. We're gonna go over here to New. We're gonna get an image from. Uh, Wait, that's not, we're going to go to open to get a new image here. And I believe mine is saved in the same install folder as XPad. So, be in main. It should come with the controller images. But if it doesn't, you can just download one off of Google Images or something. It's really not that important. In fact, you might not even really need it. But um, here, here are some controller images. So, you can just go any one of them here. It's just good to keep in reference, I suppose. But we can go with, uh, here we go. You know, that's actually a terrible controller. Let's look for a different one. Let's just look for an Xbox one. Let's just keep scrolling down till we see Xbox 360 or something similar. PlayStation, anything. Here we go, Microsoft, Xbox, here we go. Uh, oh, God. Well, you know what? This one's good enough. Or, you know, not really enough. Fuck that. Let's get another one, man. As soon as we find which one we want, we we'll probably just skip ahead to, to when I find one. Let's see, Microsoft Xbox 360. Here we go, this one will work. This will work fine. Okay, so now we have this one. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our, uh, our triggers in. We want to enable. Alright. Pull the left trigger. All right, now right trigger. Now we've got both triggers. As you can see, they're working. The next thing we're gonna do is get the D-pad online. So let's enable that. Up, down, left, right, finished. And we can just put this over where the D-pad should be. See, see, that's why we have an image here. You don't need a controller image, but it's just great to have in reference. So next is gonna be buttons. Let's start with the B button. Right there. Next is the A button. And if you ever lose track, just remember it'll flash what button you're pressing. So I'm pressing the A button, so it's flashing the A button. I'm pressing the um, B button, so it's flashing the B button. And also, I still have it on my default. So if you want to actually open a new one of those, a new profile as well, I forgot about that. Uh, so we're going to go back to altering this by going to settings. So next, we want to go with. Um, all right, so next we're gonna get the X button going. Go back to buttons. Now we have the X. Now we just need the Y button and the Start button. Get the Start button here from your Xbox 360 controller. Back button or whatever your controller you're using. You're just getting all the buttons out. Y. And of course you need your bumpers. That's right bumper. Left bumper. Wait. Ah, left bumper is right there. Okay. Finished. And now we get to the analog sticks, which is also pretty simple. Analog stick, left, up, down, right, all that good stuff. That's the left analog stick, and then now we need the right analog stick. Left, up. Alright, we're ready. Done. And that should pretty much do it for this. We're pretty much done here. We don't have to open that anymore. We will save this though. Let's save it as. Yeah, this actually works. Right, let's overwrite that one. Okay. You can save it as anything you want. You can name it anything you want. I just keep the default name. My controller Xbox 360 for Windows. That's good. Oh, there's one thing I. No, wait, no, no. We don't actually set one for this middle button here. But next we're gonna. So now you want to start off with the simple stuff. First we're gonna start off with the mouse because it's probably gonna be the most tricky one. So when you click on it, you want to go to mouse normal, and you want to go to, uh, the first thing you want to do is set your dead zone settings, which is up here, settings. And now it's time to get into the, the interesting part of how dead zone works. So, 
What's important here is this dead zone power right here is the most important. This determines exactly how um how sensitive it is overall, how sensitive the overall analog stick is. You know, how far do you have to move the analog stick before it detects that the analog stick is being moved. So for this, you want to put it to slightly less responsive. I, put, I usually put mine at 30. And the diagonal size will determine, and this is also another important one, it determines your range of motion. So what that means is, I actually have an image to give you an example. All right, if you imagine this circle as your joystick, right? Each one of these dots is an access point, right? So when you move it that way, it registers. When you move it in this dot, it registers. When you move it that way, it registers. Okay. And so that's basically what um, this is all about. So if you have this, yeah, so if you make this smaller, what's going to happen? Yeah, by making it smaller, as you can see now, I'm actually using my mouse real quick. It's a lot more rigid. The good thing about this is it's a lot more precise. Mm. Yeah, but it's kind of like an arrow key. I mean, if we want that, we can just fucking program arrow keys. So we don't want that. What we want is to actually make it slightly larger. I put mine around 70, which is good. See, now it goes a more circular pattern. So the diagonal size determines how many points are going to be used. If you have it too high, let's, let's demonstrate it being too high. If you have it too high, then it's going to get kind of annoying because it registers... Every single direction you move the analog stick, you just play around with until you find it comfortable. I find it comfortable at 70. Some people like to keep it at default. It's whatever works for you. So we can exit out of that. And next we go to the mouse settings. And you want to move together because we want them equal. We're going to move this to about a little bit less than 60. By default it's on 32 I believe. We want to put it at like 53. 53 is good for navigation and whatnot. So that's good. We can close that. Next, we go to the triggers. This is simple enough. We're going to make this one the left mouse button. This one the right mouse button. So now we can left click. We can minimize that now. And next, we're going to make the start button the escape button. Because that, that's useful for exiting full screen mode and whatnot. This is just how I have it set up. You can change these around if you want. Experiment with them. And next we're gonna have the we're gonna have this be the media back key because how that works is I can actually show you with, with a Firefox really quick. Go ahead and go to YouTube. And I guess you could probably already guess how this is gonna work. So there we go. Now by pressing the B button it automatically backs us out of the page. That's incredibly useful. Alright, and so the next thing we want to do is we're going to make these the arrow keys because I can help for making selections when you don't feel like moving the analog stick around. You have the arrow keys to help you out there. And now we're going to make this the scroll wheel. This is going to be the up scroll. This is going to be the downward scroll. So now we can scroll. But you can do the same thing with the arrow keys, which I prefer to do actually instead of using the bumpers. So there's that. Alright, and next you want to. Well, I usually make this the space right there. I make that usually the space, or actually, I make it the enter. My bad. I make that one the enter. I make this one the space, and I usually make this one the uh, backspace. And we can. We're not actually gonna save it yet. All right. Okay. So now, this is going to be very important. We actually want to make this the set selector. And we're going to get into that. So, just do what I do. Make it set to two-way. Make sure it's two-way, that way it can get back. Exit out of that. And now, with this, uh, now, what does this do, you might ask? And the set selector allows you to access different sets by pressing this button. As you can see, we have eight sets. That's as many as you can use. So what happens is, by clicking the back button, Voila, now we have an entirely new button format to work with. And this is important for a good reason. The main reason why we do this is because we want to add a mouse normal. We want to go to mouse settings. And we want to actually set the sensitivity way low, close to around 20. 18, that's good. That's perfect. And so we want to go to settings, make sure that our dead zone is about the same. Put that 70, make it slightly less responsive. There we go. So... 
Actually, sensitivity might be just a little too low. Let's up the sensitivity real quick. About 25 should be good. This is useful for when you're trying to click something very precise. So that's good. And we can just mimic all the other settings from before. Simply. Let's just do that really, really quickly. Escape. Media back key. Enter. Uh, wait, that was. Let me see that real quick. Oops. Kind of got that one wrong. This one was space. Ah, and I had this one set to backspace. All right, and let's just set these to arrow groups. There we go. And also, yeah, the scroll wheels, of course. There we go. And something I actually forgot to do. We're going to go back real quick. Go to settings. We forgot to implement the uh, analog stick buttons. So just click on those. Just click the analog stick button. Okay. Because those can be very helpful. And click OK. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want the middle mouse wheel to be that. I mean, the middle, the mouse wheel click to be that. Let's go back to set one and make it the same. So just mimicking these. And you can have, like I said, you can have up to eight sets. It's pretty useful. Um, and so there we go. I'll get into how to make multiple sets in just a second. But as you can see there, you're going to have set one and two. So. Set 1 is like your normal standard controller, and then set 2 is for a lot more precision, as you can see. We made the mouse a shit ton slower, so that way it'll be easier to select things, and you can easily just go in between the two of them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this. Now I'm going to show you how to set up, a, say if you want to have multiple sets here. Uh, there should be a way to do this. If I remember correctly. No, no, there is not. I thought you could. I'm think I'm maybe thinking of Pinnacle Game Profile. I believe that lets you do that. So this only lets you use one set. That's unfortunate, but Yeah. So that pretty much does it. Um and uh, you have an entire an uh, entire other analog stick here that you can use for whatever. I prefer not to. And then you also have this uh, this button you can use for whatever. So that should pretty much cover this tutorial. And there you go.